Carbohydrates are a very complicated food group. On one hand, we have people saying that they need to be avoided, they are useless, unhealthy, and horrible for our blood sugar levels. And on the other hand, we hear that they are good for you and we need to have more of them. Now for people with type 2 diabetes in particular, the messaging seems to be that carbohydrates are the enemy and a complete no-go if you want healthy blood sugar levels. But like all things, it's not so simple. And so today I'm going to clear the air and explain what people mean when they say that carbohydrates are bad for blood sugar and which carbohydrates people with type 2 diabetes may still need to include in their diets. So let's get into it. Hey everyone, it's Carmony from Long Game Health. Welcome back to the channel. Now type 2 diabetes is one of the most common chronic health conditions in the world. And it isn't something that we are fighting off very well because it's the fastest growing health condition in the world. The amount of people getting diagnosed with type 2 diabetes is growing faster than even heart disease and cancer. So if more of us are living with this condition, we need to make sure that everyone knows about how to navigate food, especially carbohydrates, which have a large impact on blood sugar. Now to start with, I'm just going to do a quick review of what type 2 diabetes is. I've done some videos on this in the past, so you can watch those for more in-depth information. But essentially, type 2 diabetes is a condition where your body body doesn't quite respond to insulin as well as it should and this leads to increased blood sugar levels. Now insulin is a hormone that is made in the pancreas and insulin's main job is to reduce blood sugar levels. It does this by allowing glucose to move from the blood into your cells. Now imagine your cells have gates and think of insulin as a key that unlocks the gate and lets glucose move in. Now with type 2 diabetes, those gates don't respond as well to insulin and so glucose builds up in the blood and that's how you get increased blood sugar levels. But that's not the only issue with type 2 diabetes because all this extra glucose in the blood is dangerous and it leads to other issues around the body. Over time, if blood sugar levels remain high, this can cause damage to blood vessels and nerves leading to vision problems, heart disease and nerve damage. So where do carbohydrates fit in this whole picture? Well, glucose is what most carbohydrates get broken down to when they go through digestion. So when you eat carbohydrates, it directly impacts on your blood sugar levels. And this is why it's very important that if you have type 2 diabetes, you know how to navigate carbohydrates. But do you need to avoid them completely? Well, the answer is no. What we do want to avoid though are blood sugar spikes. This is when there is a sudden rise in blood sugar levels that pushes the level beyond the safe range. Now these happen to everyone, but the reason they are a concern with type 2 diabetes is because if these spikes happen frequently, then over time, this is what causes that damage to blood vessels and nerves that lead to the other health issues later on. And with type 2 diabetes, your body doesn't have the ability to manage these spikes as well as someone without type 2 diabetes. So controlling that peak and bringing the level back down will take longer, which increases the risk for any damage. Now, if you remember a video I did a while ago, I talked about there being two main groups of carbohydrates the simple and complex carbohydrates. Now, simple carbohydrates, which are your foods such as these, these are quickly absorbed and digested. Your body can break these down to glucose very fast. And these are foods like white bread, sugary drinks, processed snacks. It's these simple carbohydrates that lead to more blood sugar spikes because your body processes them so fast that the glucose just goes right into your blood. And if you have type two diabetes in particular, your insulin doesn't work as well. And so those blood levels stay high for longer. The other downside to these simple carbohydrates is that they leave you feeling pretty hungry again soon after you eat them because they lack other essential nutrients like fiber. Now the other type of carbohydrate though is complex carbohydrates. These foods are made up of longer, bigger chains of sugar molecules and because of that they take longer for your body to break them down to glucose through digestion. This is much better for your blood sugar because it avoids the spike. It instead leads to a slow 
slow and gradual release of glucose into the bloodstream that gives you sustained energy levels while avoiding blood sugar spikes. Now these are the types of foods that are complex carbohydrates and as you can see we have whole grains, we have fruits, vegetables and legumes and you may notice that these foods tend to have a bit more of fiber and it's fiber that actually leads to the slow digestion because fiber is difficult for your body to break down. I'll be doing a few videos coming up on fiber and how important it is so make sure you do subscribe so you don't miss those ones. Now of course the other thing that complex carbohydrates tend to have more of when compared to the simple carbohydrates are your essential vitamins and minerals and also antioxidants which have health benefits far beyond blood sugar. So if you have type 2 diabetes or just want to look after your blood sugar levels the carbohydrates that you do want to avoid are these simple carbohydrates that will spike your sugar levels. But what you do need to do is include these complex carbohydrates in your diet because they are much better for your sugar levels but also they benefit other areas of overall health too. So how do you put this into practice when you are deciding on what to eat and when you're doing your grocery shopping? Well, what you need to know about is the glycemic index. The glycemic index is a measure of how quickly different foods will raise your blood sugar. So a high GI food, for example, will cause a rapid increase to blood sugar, while a low GI food will cause a slower and steadier rise. Now, high GI foods tend to be the simple carbohydrates and low GI foods are the complex carbohydrates. If you have type 2 diabetes, you will want to focus on having low GI foods. But not all foods will display their glycemic index, so here are some examples. A low GI food is a food with a glycemic index of 55 or less. A medium GI food has a glycemic index of 56 to 69. And the high GI foods, the ones that you want to avoid the most, they have an index of 70 and above. Now glycemic index is just one way to navigate carbohydrates and blood sugar and it's the main focus of today's video because I just wanted to point out that carbohydrates are an important food group and removing them entirely isn't the way to go. There are carbohydrates to avoid and if you want to make some small changes that you can sustain for a long period of time Look at these simple carbohydrates. Which of these do you know you maybe have a bit too much of in your diet? Try to reduce it and then expand and reduce more and more while having more of these complex carbohydrates. It's overwhelming to try and do it all at once and that's usually what leads to people not sticking to changes that they want to make. So I always say just start with one and go from there. And yes, that takes a long time, but it's worth it if it means you stick to it. The tricky thing is that everyone is different. We all respond to carbohydrates differently. And so if you are diagnosed with type two diabetes, this general advice here with simple versus complex carbohydrates is a good place to start, but getting some individualized help from your healthcare team, like a dietitian or your diabetes educator will just help so much more because then the advice is tailored to you and your own goals. But that is it for now. I may be back with another video on how to approach carbohydrates to help blood sugar levels as I continue on my own learnings. If you learned something or enjoyed the video, don't forget to give a like and subscribe. I put out a new video every Friday that can help educate you on health in some way. So have a good week. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, keep playing the long game.